The projection theorem is a special case of the wigner eckert theorem, which generally involves spherical tensor operators. If we consider one example of a spherical tensor operator, a rank 1 spherical tensor, we can derive a powerful theorem which states that expectation values of vector operators are proportional to expectation values of angular momentum. This projection theorem is very useful, for example, when you want to calculate the Landé g-factor in the Zeeman effect. To begin our derivation, let's consider those two matrix elements here, where A is a general vector operator and J is the angular momentum of the system. In the bra and ket states, J and M are the quantum numbers of angular momentum and alpha represents all other quantum numbers which do not play a role here. Now, since a vector operator is a spherical tensor operator of rank 1 with components Q, we can apply the wigner eckert theorem here. We get a klebsch gordon coefficient as well as a reduced matrix element, which is basically just a proportionality factor. For more information on the reduced matrix element, you can watch our video on the wigner eckert theorem. Note that we can take alpha to be equal to alpha prime in the second line, and the klebsch gordon coefficient is the same. This is important because we use the fact that the klebsch gordon coefficients are the same in order to substitute one equation into the other. This gives us the matrix element of A in terms of the ratio of two reduced matrix elements times the matrix element of angular momentum. In fact, since we were able to choose alpha and alpha prime to be equal, we can remove it from this expectation value since J does not act on the other quantum numbers represented by alpha. Now this is already a quite interesting result. It tells us that the matrix elements of any vector operator A are given by some number times the expectation value of angular momentum. But we want to go a step further and determine the value of this number. To do so, we consider the inner product of A and J in spherical components, which we can write as minus 1 to the power of Q times AQ and JQ. For more information on spherical components, you can watch our video on spherical tensor operators. Next, it's important to know that the plus and minus 1 spherical components of angular momentum are equal to minus plus 1 over the square root of 2 times the latter operators j plus minus, which are given by the x and y components of angular momentum. Again, just to be sure, we denote the spherical components with a plus minus 1 and the ladder operators just using a plus minus. And also, j0 is simply jz. Now we can calculate the matrix element of a times j, where we separate into spherical components. After applying the ladder operators onto the states with certain j and m, we get three terms. Now, since all three of them contain the matrix element of one component of A, we can use the wigner eckert theorem here again. Those matrix elements are given by a certain klebsch gordon coefficient times the reduced matrix element of A. Now comes an important observation. Since the operator A times j that we started with is a scalar operator, the result cannot depend on the quantum number m. Since the reduced matrix elements do not depend on m anyway, this means that the m dependence in the coefficients must cancel each other, such that we can write everything as some constant that may depend on j but does not depend on m or the vector a times the reduced matrix element of a. Since A stands for any vector operator in general, we can write this equation again and let the general vector A be our angular momentum. This yields the same constant times the reduced matrix element of J. Now we have expressions for the reduced matrix elements of A and J, which we can use to determine the proportionality factor from before. In particular, it was given by the ratio of the reduced matrix elements of A and J. We can write this using the new expressions that we just found and can also let j squared act on the cat state. Using this expression, we have successfully derived the projection theorem for any vector operator A. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.